Hey folks, I'm Kyle Lamb with Viking Tactics. I'm out here on the range and we often get questions from you all about how we became associated with RAND CLP and now bore and bolt as well as the, the hog grease. So the reasons I really like the product from the very beginning was the nanotechnology. I didn't understand what nanotechnology really meant, but nanotechnology means that these particles are so tiny that they will infiltrate through the carbon and get to the steel. They also are positively or negatively charged. They're opposite charge of the metal, so they're going to be attracted to the metal. They're a vegetable ester, so they're very active. They're moving all the time, and that allows them also to penetrate and really form a protective barrier over the steel. Okay, what does that mean to us as a shooter? I like to shoot. My title is not professional gun cleaner. My title is professional shooter, professional instructor, or whatever, professional trash talker, or whatever you want it to be. I would rather spend more time shooting than cleaning. Therefore, as it is attracted to the metal, it stays attracted. It stays as a, a bonding shield or whatever you want to call it. It uh, establishes another layer on the steel. So even when I clean my firearm, the carbon goes away. The RAND stays in place unless I use something really, really abrasive to get it off, which I don't. Uh, I wipe it down, get it clean. I apply, I apply more RAND CLP and I move on from there. The other thing that I told Rand, and when I said it, they kind of took in a deep breath. I said, yeah, you know, a lot of you guys use motor oil or they use automatic transmission fluid. Why would we use that? Well, motor oil is cheap. Automatic transmission fluid is cheap. Why not use it? They're great lubes. They work in motors. Okay, well, here's the first thing. They're a carcinogen. So if you take these particles, you fire your weapon, and it turns these, this uh, into a mist in the air, and you're breathing it in, well... Chase it with the Marlboro is all I can say because you're, you're inhaling something that can actually cause cancer. So if you're looking at lubes and they don't have a, a flash point that's extremely high and you're not gonna find a flash point out there higher than RAND CLP, then I probably wouldn't use that lube. I definitely wouldn't use anything that's intended for motorized vehicle, definitely not anything that goes in the transmission. One of the other things I learned quickly about the firearms lube market was there's a lot of testing being done that's fake. So you've got this one arm bandit test to show how effective your lubrication is. If somebody shows you how effective their lube is by pulling on a one armed uh, testing device, I'm going to tell you right now, it's completely fake. And we can prove that. There's ball bearing tests that are much more significant than that test. Well, we also realize that paraffin is everywhere. And why people use paraffin on firearms, I just don't get it. Maybe they, don't, uh, maybe they don't care about their guns or whatever, but paraffin is a very corrosive material that is used in machine shops for cutting metal, whatever. The difference between cutting metal, which you're gonna cut it, you need a really good paraffin-based uh, cutting lube or cutting oil. When you finish with that, you're gonna clean all that lube off. With our firearms, we're gonna lube it up with paraffin, and we're gonna go out to the range, we're gonna shoot it, and then we're gonna leave it with highly corrosive material on the metal that will actually degrade and oxidize on your metal. If you have anything that's called paraffin in the lubes that you're using, I would take it right now and go throw it away. That's going to take care of probably at least 50% of the lubes on the market.